morning everyone. Today we are going to play more with the lithium iron phosphate battery I had, which is 50 amp hours at 12.8132 volts, whichever way you want to go. The one from EWT that I recently did a review for. Well, I went camping and I went for five days and two of the days were really cloudy. So the battery worked great. My solar panels worked great. But the capacity just wasn't enough for me. So we want to take this from 50 amp hours to 100 amp hours. And there's two ways or two things we have to do. One, I bought a second battery. But this one does not have Bluetooth. And the charge controller in this, as you'll see in a few minutes, is pretty lackluster. And not very robust. Whereas the one that was in the Bluetooth one right here, you can see it has a whole really nice thick heat sink to it. And... It's generally built a lot better. Now, the problem we had last time, and even the guy from Fuel Zero has said he's had a problem connecting to the Bluetooth on here. And I had the same problem. Well, I figured out what's going on here. I identified the board from smart-bms.com. They're the manufacturer of the BMS on here. So, if we jump on here, easiest way to make it work is actually go to their website. And if you go to smart-bms.com slash capital M slash capital S for support and then slash one more time, you will get to this page. Just make sure you translate it from Chinese to English. Otherwise, you won't be able to read this. And that thing always stays in the way. But there's two programs here that we want today. We want the BMS Mobile app download English version and the top one because we're going to eventually want to reprogram this board is the PC side universal version of the host computer and you want to download that as well because the mobile app as I'll show you here in a second is basically a monitor you can't change any of the settings on the BMS but you can monitor it so let's switch over to that now now when you open it up, this thing, that's just a background to it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't mean it's actually communicating at all or anything like that. And the other thing is, if the battery is just sitting here, the Bluetooth is disabled at that point. The board is in sleep mode. So I have my test leads connected right now to my power supply. And I'm feeding it literally uh, 100 milliamps just so it's charging barely. And that wakes up the BMS and says, hey do something, either charge or a slight discharge, and it wakes it up. So, to get it to go, you tap the battery, it's going to select the device, and there we go, it pops up as Smart001. So, just click that. Bluetooth 4.0 connection successful, and in a few seconds it will start popping up information here. There we go. So, I have it charging right now at about 6.5 watts, it is charging. The current voltage, charging amperage. Now, if we scroll over, they give you this Lear check thing. You click check, and battery safe, voltage security, display normal, control normal, and it says a number of 90, whatever. And it gives you the voltage and total battery. And it says it's healthy. And I don't know why it shows a uh, hoverboard, but hey, whatever. Now, here's your main information. <coughs> Excuse me. Tells you the battery is 99%. Uh, charge controller is on. It's charging. The charging FET and the discharging FET are also on. Now here you actually can change it by clicking it. There you go. See, I can turn the charging FET off at least. Then turn it back on. Discharge FET. Doesn't want to work. There we go. It's a little touchy, but it will allow you to turn the charge and discharge off on it. Gives you your voltage, charge current, discharge current. The temperatures, the two little ports right here, which should work if I uh, hold my finger on it and warm it up, even though they're in Celsius. Yeah, see, temperature cell is going up. You see, so I'm holding the little thermocouple right now. And the other one, which is buried, should be on the board itself, but apparently they never installed it that way, so maybe we'll have to fix that later on. Um, charge number and discharge number. You can see I've only really discharged this battery 10 times. The charge, it basically increments from what I've seen. 
as soon as it hits 100%. So even if it was uh, like 95% when I was doing solar work and it just topped it off real quick, it counts that number up. So yeah, that's why that number is so much higher. Serial number, I presume of the board itself. And of course, cells 1 through 13. This board can be programmed to handle more, but of course we only have the first four. So you can see each voltage right here. And the last one just gives you same more information, sort of like how this thing's originally programmed when um, it'll turn off the charge FET if you go over 30 amps, it'll turn off the discharge FET if you go over 150 amps type of deal, the delay for it, uh, your over voltage, over temperature, the design capacity for 50 amp hours, that's one of the things we have to change because we want to add another 50 amp hours to this system. So that's the main unit itself through Bluetooth. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's program it. We're going to have to disconnect the Bluetooth and connect it via a serial adapter. Now, you can use a regular FTTI, FTDI USB to serial adapter. I'm using a very similar version of this, which let me unplug it real quick from the computer, was for a special pr uh, project, but it just makes it easier for me because it has a direct USB. It's a regular FTDI chip. You got your serial, which is receive and transmit, and a ground. So those are the three wires you're going to need. So what we're going to do, plug this back into the computer. And which one is which here? So this way I can tell you. Okay. So red on this is transmit, brown is receive. Plug that back in. What we're going to do is disconnect the Bluetooth module itself and using a few pins and getting my computer closer. Let's get that out of the way. There we go. So we're going to connect ground to ground, which ground was orange, and then receive and transmit. So Second pin, black wire, there's your ground, and then just go over one and two. And don't worry if you flip the receive and transmits. If it doesn't connect to the computer program, just flip them around. You probably got them reversed. You're not going to hurt anything. It just won't communicate correctly. So now let's switch over to the Windows screen capture, and I'll show you exactly what it shows and how we can reprogram this board. Okay, we're going to have to do this the old school style and just use the camera pointed at the monitor because I don't like Windows and I don't use Windows and I really don't have the time to sit here and try to get proper screen capture software for Windows. So, here we are hooked up. I've got my little USB to serial adapter plugged into the BMS. So, let's open up the program itself. And here's the program. So this is just a default screen. It's not connected yet. You have to click here to open COM. And I'm on COM7. Click OK. And now we are communicating with it. And it says, yes, we are fully charged. There's your voltage. There's always a trickle current. I think it just doesn't sense it correctly. But the battery's not connected to anything right now. That's the temperature of the PC board. And then you got two temperatures down here. Thermal couple one, thermal couple two. Thermal couple three. Oh wait, no, it's the same temperature. Yeah, that's the board itself, 22 and 22. That's the board, that's thermal couple one, thermal couple two. Uh, the charge cycles, the discharge cycles. Now I was already able to get in here and change the cap design to 100 amp hours. Unfortunately, I can't change the cap full, the cap update, cap remain. The only thing that's gonna change on it is this thing's gonna think it's discharging faster than it really is, but it still will not shut itself off. Now, if you go to more, yeah, here's your business area. Here's where you change all your settings, but you need a password to change them. So I had to email the company and got in touch with them, and they sent me the password after I signed the document saying that uh, they're not liable if I screw it up. Not a big deal. So the only things I really changed on it, I upped the um, cell voltage. They had it at like 3.4 for a top off for voltage on a charge per cell. I brought it to 355. I brought the battery voltage up to 14.2. It was like 13.8 before. They were really conservative. I mean, this is still technically conservative. We're nowhere near 14.6. Um, 
I also changed the balance mode. They had the start voltage at 3.3 uh, volts, and that's where it would end up discharging after it was fully done charging and it balanced itself. I brought it up to 3.4, so this way it has a slightly higher resting voltage, but not by much. And right here, design capacity, 100 amp hour, and that's what I changed it to. Now, of course, without the password, if you try to update, it says, do you want to save the parameters? And it throws this up here. It says, no, you can't do that. Once you get the password, though, if I go up here, and here's my password. If I click F3, oh, there we go, and type that password in, 8217528278. Now I get a happy question mark thing. So now if I click Update, Save Parameters, success save. So now I can save it as long as I'm on this window. The second I get away from this window, I have to type in the password again and hit F3 again. But it lets you change some of the parameters on it. So I've tweaked a few things, but not much. So let's go now. I'm going to take both of the batteries apart and turn them into one big 100 amp hour unit. Okay, so here's the BMS. I basically just pried it right out of the top case from that battery it was just press fitted in there which was great and here's battery pack one if i separate and lift up real quick see there's the first battery pack and the second battery pack is right underneath here here's the second one now all i did was i took so this is the second pack back here i took the positive leads and ran them if i bring this out of the way and soldered them directly to the bus bars for the positive side on here. You can see here's the original tap offs. Oh, no, you can't. Arr, pull down. See, here's the original tap offs for the three leads that go to my positive output. So I just brought the three positives on over and soldered them up here. So they're in parallel. Now as for the negatives, you'll see three blues over here, which run over to this battery pack. And this is the negative side. Whereas you can see, here's my negative wires that run the same spot. So. The batteries themselves are in parallel. Let me put this cover back on so it doesn't short out. And if I slide back down a little bit, you'll see right here I spliced the balance wires and put them in parallel as well. So these both batteries are in full parallel now with a regular connection. I do need to do some final wrapping, so let me take about five rolls, I don't know, I bought five rolls of electrical tape, and wrap this battery pack up so it's safe, it doesn't short out, it all stays together as one piece, and I'll be right back. Oh, and here is a quick view before I wrap this battery up of the BMS that was on the battery that did not have Bluetooth. It is a lot smaller, there's no heat sinking on it whatsoever. This is just left over from where it was stuck onto the black top of the mat right here on the second battery, you can't change the settings in it whatsoever, and it's very basic. So yeah, that's why I didn't want to use this one. So let's go ahead and wrap the battery. Okay, and here it is fully wrapped up with a whole roll of electrical tape. So it is now one whole unit everywhere. And I even taped down the BMS just a little bit so this way it won't get damaged. A little bit of strain relief right here on these negative wires. And here's the Bluetooth, just wrapped around and tried to make it look night, nice. <clears throat> so now the only thing we are waiting on is the manufacturer of this BMS also makes a display that would replace this Bluetooth, which has Bluetooth built into the display. And this way I can have it on my solar generator and I can have the MPPT charge controller display and then I actually have this BMS display telling me everything that's going on with the solar generator. So while that comes from China, let's uh, click our fingers three times and see if it makes its way over here. And here it is magically. It came in through China and I have it installed now on my new box that's made up for everything. Here's the charge controller display and here's the battery display. So let's zoom in on it a little bit. Now, you got three buttons. The bottom button is an off button. They really did not put much coding effort into this uh, display, but it does work. You hit the top button, and it will wake up, and it'll tell you 100%. The amp hours doesn't match up correctly again. 
Um, the battery voltage is right. There is no power going in or out right now. And the circuit board is at 23 degrees Celsius. And it blinks on and off down here saying normal. It will say charging or discharging when it's actually doing something. Other than that, that's all this screen gives you. So it works, but it doesn't work that well. This is the screen. And it will go to sleep mode if it's not doing anything. So I just went to sleep. I just woke it back up. This screen's good. Cell voltage, four series in millivolts. So it gives me each cell voltage, which is great. I like having this feature. So for 16 bucks, it's not bad. It does not have Bluetooth built into it like they said it was. So if I want Bluetooth, I got to open up the back of the case. And there's an extra one of these connectors that I got to somehow fish the Bluetooth connector into here. Which I probably will do, but just not on this video. So here's my new and improved solar generator setup. Everything is right in there perfectly. Here's the battery, here's the main charge controller, and then you got the whole top display here. And it fits right into the box right here off to the side. And this is the plastic box that I use for my solar generator when I go camping. So this whole unit actually just drops right into this area right here. That fits like a glove. And there we go. And it is ready to go camping now. So if you like this video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know what to do, but do me a favor, leave a comment down below and let me know why you didn't like it. This way I can improve my content in the future. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.